So a very good day, everyone, again. And um, today we'll be talking about the Galoa fields. And uh, well, it's one interesting part of uh, the mathematics of coding, because uh, in as much as we want to play with codes, uh, the French guy was able to uh, devise uh, the mathematical technique, I should say the algebra of resolving uh, various analyzing codes. And this will be very, very useful when we begin to talk about error control coding. So uh, a quick one, I would love to run through this before we go for our first break and then come back uh, to continue with uh, the information theory aspect of this course. Now, uh, it should be noted that the uh, Galois field is also known as the finite field, okay? And when we talk about the finite field, we actually mean uh, it's a field that has finite number of elements, okay? So technically, we can also say that the Galois field, or better still, the finite field is the basic algebra required to enhance our study of codes. And this will become very, very useful when we begin to deal with error control codes, okay? And just before I, I go on, I would love to get your feedback. I would love to hear you. If, if you could unmute once in a while, okay, uh, Mr. Ebon. Can you hear me? I'm hearing you, sir. Clearly. And um, Mr. Ogaga, hope the network is better from your end. I can, I can hear you, sir. Okay, that sounds good. Now, uh, as I was saying, uh, to simply designate the uh, Galois field, which we would designate as GF, it is a finite field. And here we say that a finite field is that field that contains finite number of elements. Since finite number of elements. And shortly, we'll see that what actually makes it a field is because we can actually perform the basic mathematical operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and inversion, which you call division, right? So uh, here we can say that some examples of the Galois field are Galois field two, and here we say this contains two elements, okay? Contains two elements. And we also have Galois field eight, which contains eight elements. And this also could be designated as Galois field two to the three. Okay. Where this is the same as A. So there are quite a number of, um, of finite fields. And here, uh, these two designations are very, very important to us because soon we'll see that they form the two types of uh, the Galois field or finite fields, where we have this to be of the form, the Galois field P, which we call the prime field, and the Galois field P to the M, which we call the extension fields. But nothing to worry about yet, we're going to talk about them in details. 
And to put things in perspective, it would be nice to consider a few structures, okay? So let us look up a few structures. Let's say algebraic structures. So the first of these is, is a group. Then we have green, and then we have field. So for us to begin to talk about finite fields, then we need to know what a field means, okay? And a field follows directly from the group, or better still, the ring. And uh, to put this simply, uh, the group, say G, designated as G, is a set of elements in which we are able to perform the operations of addition and subtraction. So, say, the group set of elements which So here we can perform addition. While in a ring, or better still, a ring is also a set of elements in which we can perform operations of addition, subtraction, and multiplication. So for the ring, it's also a set of elements where we can perform the addition, subtraction, and multiplication operations. And the field F is equally a field, okay, or better still, a set of elements where we can perform both addition, subtraction, multiplication, and then inversion, okay, which we call the division operation. So you observe that while in a group we can perform addition and subtraction, in a ring, we can perform addition, subtraction, and multiplication, but the inversion becomes a problem, okay? But in the field, we can perform all operations. But what is of interest to us is the field, and not just the field. We do not want to deal with infinite fields that have some infinite number of elements. We want to deal with a field or a set of elements uh, that are finite. In other words, they are less than infinity. So we could say 0, 1, like we have in the binary field. Okay. And that's what we are going to be talking about because in talking about coding or dealing with codes, we deal in the binary field. Okay. And there we we'll say uh, Galois field 2, which contains two elements. And soon we'll see that in coding, the extension field. Where we have the Galois field two to the m is of paramount interest to us. Okay. Now that we have been able to explain what the field is, is then uh, da, 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 da. what is a finite field? So we already said that the finite field is the Galois field. And it is a set with a finite number of elements, okay? It's the same as the field. And it is set finite number of elements in which the operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and inversion applies. So the finite field exists if and only if it has 
to the n elements, where p is a prime number, and then uh, m is a non-negative integer. This is positive. So where m is a positive value, then p is a prime. And the smallest prime we want to deal with is 2, OK? So in other words, we could have uh, value of p 2 to the m or whatsoever, even 3 and, and the like, 3, 5, 7, 9, no. So 9 is not a prime because this is the same as 3 squared. Yeah. So this is not a prime. So 11 is also a prime. So we could go in that order. So now that we've been able to establish what a field is, what a finite field is, and we also know what a group is. So what is the formal description of a group? So because from, from the formal description of a group, will be we should be able to provide a formal definition or description of a field. So let us take this. So here we have that a group G, for instance, is a set of elements. in which the multiplication operation, that is the dot, is used to combine elements. So and G would be a group, so this G will be a group if the following conditions are satisfied. So the first is that the group G is closed under the multiplication operation. So under the multiplication operation. So what we mean is that for all elements A, B, in G, there exists, there exists, A dot B in the same element G. So it means that, observe that here we are defining group, or better say we have defined group based on the multiplication operation. So we said a group G is a set of elements in which the multiplication operation is used to combine elements. So if the multiplication operation based on these conditions that we given about five of them, if they don't hold, then we do not have a group. And here we, the first condition here is that G has to be closed on that multiplication operation. So if, for instance, we have A, B as elements of G, then uh, it means that this group will exist if the product of A and B is also an element of G. So let's, let's change this color. So let's assume we have, for instance, the elements uh, zero. Okay, let's not take this way. So let's assume zero and one are elements of this group. Okay. So if we take the product zero dot one, which is the same as zero, you see that it's also an element of G, which is zero. You get it. So the product of these two elements is also an element in the group. So it means that this is, a, this is closed under the multiplication operation. So these 
elements from a group. That's what we mean. And then the second condition that must be satisfied is that the multiplication operation is associated. Okay? The multiplication. Observe that we are defining based on the multiplication operation. Now, the multiplication operation must be associated. So it means that for all elements, for all elements, say A, B, C in G, so there exists a group, let's say this, if A dot B dot C is the same as A dot B dot C. So that's uh, the law of associativity, okay? So the, in other words, the law of associativity must hold uh, if those elements from the group. And then the top condition that must be satisfied here is that there exists an, an identity or neutral element in G, okay? There exists an identity or a neutral element in G. So what is an identity element? One, right? So if you have your matrix and all of that, and then we have to, to get an identity matrix, then you know we have to do this one. And now uh, what we are going to show shortly is that a zero, a zero and a one forms a neutral element or an identity element, depending on the operation that is being performed. So for multiplication operation, one is the identity element. For addition operation, zero is the identity element. Well, we'll see that shortly. So there's nothing to worry about for now. But uh, uh, in this case, we now have that one is an element of the group such that a dot one, which is the same as one, dot A gives us an element that is also in G, okay? That is there. So A, such that A now is also an element in G, okay? Because A dot one is the same as A, one dot A is the same as A, and that A, is the same, is an element in G, given that one is an identity or neutral element. So the product of that identity element should, if with, with, an, with an element in the group must give us an element in that group. So that's what we're trying to say. So if, that's, if that condition is satisfied, then it means the group exists. And then the fourth condition is that for every element in G, there exists an inverse of the same element, of that same element in G, okay? So for every element in the group G, there exists an inverse of that element in G. So what we're trying to say is that if A is an element in G, therefore, there also exists that inverse, the inverse of that element is also an element in G. So therefore, this now gives rise to the fact that the product of that element and this inverse must give us a neutral element, an identity element. A inverse the same as A inverse of A must give us a unit value one. Okay. And then the fifth condition is that that must be satisfied for a group to exist is that the group is also commutative.
So the law of commutativity applies. That is, A dot B is the same as B dot A for all A and B in G. Now, is this clear before, before we move on? I need to get your feedback. Is this clear? We have a BSA in class. We have a mockery. We have Mr. Ebong. We have a DME. So is this clear? Do you understand what we've talked about so far? Have a message. Yes, it is. I'll prefer to hear your voice, please. Uh, so it means I am not talking to some robots. Okay. So uh, I. It is clear, but the example will help us better. Okay, right. Yeah, we're going to play with examples as we delve into the complexities. Yeah. Well, we are just trying to provide some basic definitions at the moment. And well, these are simple uh, uh, algebraic uh, notations or uh, assumptions you already know coming from your set theory and and some other uh, activities. Okay, so should these conditions be satisfied, then we know that we'll have a group. But our interest is not just a group, it is a field. Okay, but this is going to help us provide a formal definition for a field. So let us look at one simple example, just as you requested. So, uh, well, uh, let us, uh, okay. And I, I want you to know that not all set of elements form a group, okay? So let's assume we have a set of real numbers where we have zero, one, two, all the way to, all the way to N minus one. So does this form a group? I'd love to get your reaction. Does this form a group? Does it? Looking at the conditions, let us let's go back. Let's come back. Now, this is what I just put up. So you, I want you to look at these conditions and then tell us if this, this set of real elements forms a group. Zero, one, zero, two, three, all the way to N minus one. Does this form a group going by? These uh, now, if we look at the first zero dot one is the same as zero, so and zero is also there, so it's like condition one is satisfied. So one times two is the same as two. Okay, two times three is the same as six. So that's also a member, uh, an element in this group. Okay, fine. So this condition is satisfied. Now the multiplication operation must be associated. So if, for instance, we have 0, 1, 2, 3, and then we multiply them, it should be the other way around. So this also is satisfied. Now, there exists an identity or a neutral element in, in the group. Should we multiply, say, uh, 2 by 1, then we have it's the same as 1 times 2. That gives us 2. So this is also satisfied, all right? So, now, so if we say 2.1 over 2 is the same as 1 over 2.2, so this also, and this should give us 1, right? It's the same as 1. So this is also satisfied, right? Is that satisfied? It's satisfied to an extent. 
not in this all, not in all, not not in all cases, right? Not in all cases. No condition. Because condition is no place. zero condition what? Four. Four. And that's where right. I'm, that's where we are now. So this is not satisfied because zero dot inverse of zero does not give us one. So this condition is not satisfied because we have a zero element here. Okay, so the multiplicative inverse, this is a multiplicative inverse. Multiplicating inverse is violated. So this does not form a group because the multiplicative inverse is violated. But the uh, addition inverse or additive inverse is not violated because this is multiplicative inverse. So how about additive inverse? Additive inverse. Additive inverse says A. Now the inverse of A is what? Minus A, right? So A minus A should give us zero. Okay? So zero minus zero will give us zero. Zero plus minus zero will give us zero. Now, one plus minus one will give us one minus one will give us zero. So the additive inverse holds. But for us to have a group, the multiplicative inverse must hold. And in this case, the multiplicative inverse does not hold. It's violated because we have a zero element. So for if, had it been, there is no zero element here, then this would have been able to give us a group. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Yes. Because the because the multiplicative inverse will hold, but in this case the multiplicative inverse is violated because we have a zero element. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. okay. So uh, now let's move to fields. So let's look at fields. Now we already know that a field is a set of a finite. It's a field that is a is a is a group of or a set of finite elements. So, to put this uh, formally, now we have that a field F is a set of elements in which. Both addition, which is positive sign, and multiplication, of sign, precious. Recall that in the group operation, we actually perform multiplication operation, and we use that to validate the conditions. But uh, when it comes to the field, both addition and multiplication operations perform. Okay, so we can now say that F is a field. If the following conditions are satisfied, so the first is that with the addition operation, all elements. including the neutral element zero forms an additive group. Okay. So it means that with the addition operation, all the elements including the neutral element zero, recall, for us to have a group, 
uh, in the example we just had, having a zero uh, in the list of elements invalidated the uh, um, as adoption of that distribution as a group. Okay, but now we're saying, well, with the addition operation, because if you look at it, the additive inverse was satisfied in that case. So with the addition operation, all elements, including the neutral element zero, forms an additive group. And also the second condition is that with the multiplication operation, all elements except the neutral element zero forms a multiplicative group, just like we saw earlier. So with the multiplication, all elements except the neutral element zero forms And recall that I already mentioned that zero and one are both neutral elements. So the identity elements in di considering different operations. So if we are considering the additive operation, then uh, zero is an identity element, it's a neutral element. But if we are considering multiplicative operation, then one is a neutral element and uh, is the identity element. But in this case, with the multiplication operation, all elements except the zero uh, element, which is the neutral element, forms the multiplicative group. Okay. And then the third condition here is that with the two operations, the field satisfies the distributivity law. Okay. So with the two operations, that is positive. Such that A, B, C in F will be satisfied if A dot B plus C is the same as A dot B plus A dot C. So there are a few things I would love you to note in this case. So I want you to note this point. A set of real numbers is a field with the neutral elements or element zero for all additive groups. Hence, zero is the zero element, or better still, the identity element relative to the addition operation. And secondly, a set of real numbers is a field with the neutral element one for all multiplicative 
activity. So just like, uh, just as in this case, can therefore say that one is the unique element or identity element relating to the multiplicative group. And also, one more thing I would love you to take note of is that the order of a field is the same as the total number of elements in that field. So if I should say, for instance, what is the order of the Galois field two? It's of order two because we have two elements in that field. Okay, that's just what I wanted to take. So with this in place, then there's one other thing we maybe we are going to be, you know, saying often as we begin to talk about poles, because shortly uh, we'll try to analyze the information theory aspect of this course. And then, because the course is in two parts, the information theory and then the coding theory, uh, the coding. Now, uh, when it comes to coding, we are going to be playing with this basic algebra, the Galois field, okay, uh, analysis. And then we are going to be saying things in two folds, either as a scalar or as a vector. So I would love to just mention the vector space in passing, then while we go back to our finite fields, okay? So vector space. Well, uh, encoding the binary vector space so encoding uh, the uh, binary vector space is denoted as V sub two to the N, okay? Now here, N is the length, is the binary length, okay? So N, is the binary vector. Okay. So in other words, if I should have V sub two to the two, then it means that the length here is two. The length of my bit sequence is two. So I can either have a zero, zero, I can either have a zero one, I can either have a one zero, I can have a one one. And if I have two sub two, so three, then we can have zero, 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 one, and so on. How about to the fourth order? Then we can have up to four bits, zero, 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 one, and all the way, okay? So in this case, we are dealing with vector space. Okay, and here the uh, subparameter is two because we are dealing in the binary field. Okay, and to make uh, things even more interesting, a vector space will therefore exist over a field F. Take note that the field F, F in this case, is a scalar. Okay, so now if the vector field or better still, the vector space will exist over this scalar, will exist over the, 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 the field F, then some conditions must be satisfied. So I love the white.
Okay. So now the vector space V will exist over a scalar field F if the following conditions are satisfied. The first of which is that for all alpha in F and also for all V in the vector space V, then alpha, the scalar times the vector must be an element in the vector space, okay? And then the second condition is that for all elements U, V in the vector space, and also for all A, B in the scalar field, then, then, A dot U plus V must be the same as A dot U plus A dot V. And then also A plus V dot V will be the same as A dot V plus V dot V satisfies the law of distributivity. And then the top point here is that for all vector V in the vector space and for all scalar A, B in the scalar field, then a dot v dot u is the same as a dot v dot u satisfies the associativity law. And also, if the neutral element is an element of the scalar field, then the neutral element, the product of the neutral element and the vector gives the same value of the vector. For all vector value in the vector space. Okay? So for us to have a vector space, over a scalar field, these conditions must be satisfied. And uh, the explanation follows directly from the example we worked out initially. So uh, intuitively, we can now say for the vector space, for the binary vector space two, here we have about four elements, right? such that the binary vector space two will give us zero, 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 one, one, zero, and one, one, okay? And recall that uh, the number of elements is the same as two to the N, such that when two to the two, we give us four, right? That's why we have this, okay? Well, we'll begin to look up some of those things much later. So if we say uh, the vector space, for instance, the binary vector space three, we give us uh, two to three, which is equal to eight. So we are going to have about eight elements, right? 
And you know, in the binary distribution, we'll have uh, that's one, two, three, four. Zero to the one, so that gives us uh, four to one, right? So uh, when they are all turned off, we have our zeros. When one is turned on, so in other words, here. Have one, two. All right. So when all zeros are turned on, so we have a zero. When one is turned on, we have a one. When two is turned on, then this bit is turned on. That's two. When then for three, then two plus one, that is three. Then for four, then only this bit is turned on. Then for five, then four plus one, so that's five. This plus this, so that's five. Then six. Then we also have six, and it means these two bits are turned on four plus two, so we have this. Then here we have four plus two, that is uh, six and seven. So three bits are turned on. So we have eight possible combinations for the binary vector space three, on and on, okay? So we can also tell for binary vector space four, we have about two to the four, which is 16 possible uh, vectors, okay? And uh, before we delve into the uh, Galois field proper, I think it would be proper if we review the modulo operation, because that is what we are going to be playing. And uh, just before I, I go on, any, any, any questions so far? Any questions? Are we still together in class? Love to get your feedback. Any question, please? Are together, sir. There is no question. Okay. Now uh, I want to understand. I want to understand you. You already have an understanding of the modulo operation, isn't it? Where you hear of your modulo two or the modulo two addition? Or uh, at times you get to hear the modulo two multiplication. Uh, I want to be very sure. Do we can we still recall this uh, those operations? Yes, yes sir. Sir. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So uh, here we know that we use an exclusive OR gate to achieve this. Why we use a regular AND gate to achieve the modulo two operation. Okay, so I'll quickly recap and then I'll give you a brief exercise here and now. Okay, so let's try out the simplest one. So let us look up the modulo two addition. Now, I already mentioned that this is achieved using an exclusive OR gate. Okay. Okay. And then, so if we have, for instance, the operation, the modulo two operation. So we have a zero one here, we have a zero one here. So if we say uh, the modulo two addition between zero and zero is going to give us what? That is zero. That will give us what? Can you give me the answer please? Zero, zero. Zero, zero, okay. How about zero, one, zero, modulo, Two addition between zero and one. This will give us what? One. To give one. us what? One. Okay. Now one zero. One zero will give us what? Zero. One. This will give us what? One one to give us one. one. Okay. 
and one one will give us what two addition. Give us one. Are you sure? I don't think so. The modulo two addition between one and one will give us what? Now let's look at it. That will be zero. Then you take away one. That will be zero because one plus one is equal to two. And in this field, we have zero and one. That's where I'm going. So two does not exist in this field. So we have a finite field, a binary finite field for which we have two elements and the two elements are zero and one. So when we add up, you see that we have two. Two is not an element in this field. So it does not exist in the field. So we now have to divide. So it's going to give us one remainder, zero. So we take the remainder as our answer, which is zero. So that's what the exclusive OG does. Is that correct? Because zero, yes, an, because zero is an element in this field. Okay. Now let us look up the modulo two multiplication. Because we're going to be playing with all of these uh, as we progress. But it would be good if we do this, then we'll come back to coding later. So here I said we can actually achieve this using the AND operation, the AND gate, so AND operation. So here we have the AND gate. Okay. So if we repeat what we just did, so we have a modulo two of Uh, a modulo two multiplication. And then we have a zero one here, zero one. So zero, the modulo two multiplication between zero and zero will give us what? This is your simple and operation. Zero. Zero. Good. Now zero and one will give us what? Zero. Zero. Okay. One, zero. So one and zero. We give us zero. zero. And then one and one, we give us what? One. One. Okay. Beautiful. I think we are really tagging along. So now let us move forward. Now we already know how to perform the modulo two operation. So should I have modulo P, for instance, you already know what to do as well. So should the parameter exceed P, then it means that that element is not contained in the group. Then we have to perform this operation to provide the answer. Now the same thing applies here, but let us do a modulo three multiplication. Modulo three multiplication. We just want to recap this, then we jump back into our field analysis. So we have modulo two, modulo three multiplication. So, so let's assume I have one, two here, then I have one, two here. So one times one here will give us what? Okay, so one times one in modulo three multiplication will give us what? I need your answer, please. One. One. One times two. One times two will give us what? Two. Now, the, the rule of thumb in modulo three, we have zero, one, two elements in this field. Okay, so two times one will give us what? Two. 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 Mm -hmm. it's, it's two. So two times two is going to give us four. So what's going to be the answer here? Zero. 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 It can be zero. It can okay, be one. 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 Yeah, it's going to be one because we one. have two. one, right? So it's one, right? Perfect. I think we are we are actually uh, we are tagging along very well. So let us let us look up 
modulo 4, modulo 4, multiplication. So here we have one, two, three for instance, and we have one, two, three. So one times one will give us what? So recall that one. in this field, we have zero, one, two, three, right? So this is one. Yes. Then this is what? Two. Then this is one times two. Three. This is what? Three. Three. So two times one is what? Two. Two times two is what? Two times two is what? One. No. One. Two times two is what? Two times two is four. Two times two is four. Mm. So, so what is the answer? That's one remainder one. Is that remainder one? Okay, four divided one. by four. Four divided by four. That's is one, one remainder zero. Zero. So what's the answer? Zero. Zero. Good. Zero goes in there. Now, two times three is what? Six. Six. So what's going to be the answer here? One remainder um two. Remainder two. Yeah, two. So two is the answer. So three times one is what? Three. Three. So um three times two is what? That's two. Two goes in there. Two. Okay, three times three is what? Nine. So that'll be um Nine divided by four is it? Mm -hmm. That'll be two. that be two. Two remainder one. So one goes answer? in there is correct. One, yeah. So so when we so, yeah one. So the answer is one. So when we perform modulo four multiplication, this is what we get. So we are going to do the last one before we jump back to um, the business of the day. Okay. Uh, uh, so let's do modulo five multiplication. That's one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. So one times one is going to give us, so recall that in this field, we have zero, one, two, three, four, right? So that's what we have. So one times one will give us what? Yeah. So let's be quick. This will give us what? Seven. One times one. 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 One times two. One. One times two. 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 One times three. Two times one times three three one three times four one four. times four four yeah so two times one four two times one two two times two 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 times two four two times three four. okay two times three we give us what in modulo five Two times three, that's going to give us one, isn't it? Remember one. Yeah, so it's going to give us one. one. So two times three. So two times four is going to give us what? Two times four to give us what? Zero. No? Three, yes. Because two times four is eight. So that's one remainder three in modulo five, right? So we have to do it. Is that clear? Is it clear? Okay, so we, we lost the connection. So I think we'll just uh, come back in. Okay, so uh, 
three times one is three. Three times two is uh, is what? Recall that we have zero, one. One is not that one. Four. So it's one. The answer is one. So three times three will give us what? Three times three in modulo five will give us what? Nine, nine. One remember that. That'll be what? One remember that three. No, three times three. Three times three modulo five. Three times three. That's one, one remember that four, four, right? Yeah. So what's the answer? So what's the answer? Four. Four. Good. Now three times four will give us what? Where? So what's the answer? Uh, the modulo five multiplication. Two. Two. Yeah, it's two. So two four times one. one. Yeah. So four times one. Four. Four. And then uh, four times two. Four times. Three. Three. Then four times three. Two remember two. Two. Then two. four times four. Four times four. One. Yeah, one. Three. One. The other. One. 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 Yeah. Perfect. Now, uh, with this, uh, we can as well assume that you you have an under you have a good understanding of the modulo uh, operation. Okay, be it modulo two, modulo uh, be it mod, uh, modulo uh, the modulo x of p addition or modulo x of p multiplication. So, should we now move to mod p, be it multiplication or addition, you should be able to resolve that. So I'm going to come back to this as we delve into the Galois fields, okay? Now, um, uh, we can, now if we also recall the vector space, uh, the binary vector two, where we said we have zero, zero element, zero, one, one, zero, and one, one. So if, for instance, we perform addition, so 0, 0 plus 0, 1, that will give us what? Uh, 0 plus 0, 0 plus 0, 0, then, then 0 plus 1, 0 plus 1, right? So that will give us 0, 1, right? Now, zero, one. in a similar vein, 1, 0, if we add these two codes, 1, 0, and 1, 1, and 1, 1. So this will give us one plus one, and then zero plus one. So this is gonna give us zero, then this is gonna give us one. So, and zero one is also, where this uh, is not planned, it's just coincidence that they are both, they, 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 they have to be the same code. It's also a code in that vector space. Now, if we also perform scalar multiplication, 0 0.01, for instance, we're going to get 0, 0. This also a vector in the vector space. And 1.01, 1 .01, for instance, will give us 0, 1, which is also a vector in the vector space. So both addition and multiplication must satisfy you know, uh, those basic conditions. Well. Uh, that's, by the way, we just needed to play with the basic algebra we already know. So now let us come back to uh, the Galois fields, okay? Uh, now, uh, types of Galois fields. Okay. Any questions so far before we just uh, move on? Is there any question? You have any question? Any question, please? I think with the examples, I think with the examples, uh, it's very clear now. 
Yes, very clear. Okay. Now, can you tell me the two types of Galois fields we have? Can anybody tell me? Do you have any idea? Okay. Group fields. Yeah, the types. Okay. Well, when we talk about the types of Galois field, we actually mean the types of finite fields. Okay. Uh, these are the uh, types of finite fields. Okay. And here we have two types. The prime field and the extension field. Okay. So the prime field is given as the Galois field P, while the prime field is given as Galois field P to the M. Okay. So um, when we say a prime field, Let's just put that up here. Prime field. Galois field P. So if we say a prime field, one thing I want you to take note of here is that for the prime field, the elements, let me check the bottom. The elements are in integer form. Okay. Why for the extension field, the elements are in polynomial form. Okay. So that's why um, in coding, at some point you see that we begin to play with x cubed plus x plus one. And then we begin to extract the codes from this, okay? ETC. We now say, well, the coefficients of these are the same as some codes, okay? And if, for instance, this is for uh, eight bits code word, then what will this be? Then it means that we have x naught plus x one plus x squared plus x two plus x to the four plus x five x six x to the seven one two three four five six seven eight and if we now want to map this particular code relative to this polynomial then we now say well x to the one is the same as one so it's turned on here then this is turned on also x to the power of one is this this is also turned on x squared is turned off, so that's zero. x cubed is turned on, that's one. This is turned off, this is turned off, this is turned off, this is turned off. So this now will give us a zero, 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 one, zero, one, one, okay? So when we begin to use the polynomial to represent the binary distribution, then we are, we most likely, or definitely will be uh, performing our operations in the extension field, okay? So, what 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 I just wanted or what we wanted to understand here is that when we begin to play with codes in this format, what we will be dealing with will be the Galois extension field, and it's of this form. Okay, we already said this is a prime number and this is an integer. Okay, and now when we do not when we have the distribution all in the code form, okay then we know that all the elements are not in the polynomial form. They do not have the polynomial distribution, but rather they are simply integer values. Then we know we are dealing with the prime field. Is that clear? Is that clear? I have the question, sir. Okay, go ahead. What informed the number of digits that we use? that conversion. Okay, I, I just mentioned that if we had eight bits uh, sequence, eight. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, that's it's that was, okay then. That was an assumption. Okay, that was an assumption. All right. Okay. Well, we'll come to that when we begin to do coding, okay? And then we'll now tell where, why it is so, because we want to tell the, uh, the block length, we want to tell the message bits and the block length n. So when we now have the block length n, for instance, you know, we already talked about systematic codes, right? 
I think in our last class, we made mention of systematic codes, isn't it? You still remember? Where the message bit is separate from the redundant bits. You still remember? I need someone to talk to me, please. <laughs> so we have message bits, and then we have the redundancy here, right? Do you remember this for a systematic yes. code? And we say, now, this actually is what we call a code word. It's a code word, OK? And it's described by length n. Length n. Why the message bit is described by length k. So this now gives us an nk matrix. Okay. When we get to coding, don't worry. You don't worry about this for now. Just know that the message bit is of size k. Why the entire code word length, which includes the message bit and the redundant bit, is uh, uh, length n, such that the redundancy will now be n minus k, which we could call a b. Okay. Such that this now gives us a matrix of n by k, that is the code word length by the message bit length, okay? So when we begin to deal with this, this will now inform the length. You know, I just mentioned a. So this distribution, when we analyze this distribution, it will now inform the length of the size of bits you will be dealing with. Do you understand? Because we are, not, we are not going to have the message bit size by the time we not, by the time we add the uh, the the uh, redundant bit or the parity bit, then that will not tell the actual length whether it's eight bits, whether it's five bits or ten bits or twenty bits and all of that. So that's what actually informs that. But right now I just gave an I just put put up an assumption. Do you get the point? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, so let's get this out. Let's come back to our Galois field. The arithmetic of coding. Uh, that's our algebra. Okay. Our algebra. Okay, so now when we talk about the prime field, we already made mention that the elements are in integer form. And contrast to this, uh, for extension fields, the elements are in polynomial form. We already described how the polynomial form looks. So for the prime field, a gamma field is a prime field if the order of the field is a prime, okay? So a gamma field is a prime field if the order of the field is a prime. So uh, an example of a prime field would be that P is the same as two, okay? So, and here we denote this as the Galois field two. So some other prime fields are Galois field three. We have Galois field five. Can you give me some more examples? Galois field what? I need some more examples because this has to be a prime. It has to be a prime number. So can someone give us another prime? Is it possible to have seven? Seven, okay. So which do we have next? Galois field. Galois field Nine. one? Well, that's not going to give us a prime field. Now, Galois field nine will not give us nine. a prime. Now, this will not give us a prime field. This is not a prime field. Okay, nine, nine cannot be used. Yeah, because now this is going to give us Galois field three to the power of two. So that, that brings be us, level. So that brings us to extension field, right? So this is not a prime field. So Galois field 11, now you get the idea, okay. right? Okay. So, so we have 11. So that is clear, okay. So if that is clear, let us go to uh, the extension fields. 
uh, extension P. So we have the gala field P to the N, right? And here we say the elements are in polynomial form. Elements are in polynomial form. So here we say that a gala field is an extension field if it is of the order P to the N, right? So a gala lower field is an extension field if it is of the order p to the m. Now, where p is a prime and m is a non negative integer, right? Integer. So it means that it is a positive value. So you know that the Galois field P to the M contains P to the M elements, right? So the number of elements in the extension field is the same as P to the M. And here, this brings us to an interesting extension field, which is the Galois field two to the M. Now, this is an important extension field because this is paramount uh, uh, in, in, in dealing or in dealing with our coding, okay? So we are going to be playing with the Galois field two to the M going forward, okay? Because it's of paramount interest to us in coding. So just take note of this. In coding, this is of paramount interest. So whatsoever we're going to be doing with the extension field is going to be the Galois field two to the N. Okay. So here uh, you note that the, the Galois field arithmetic must be performed in, must be performed in the modulo form. And we already reviewed the modulo um, arithmetic. And also know that subtraction is the same as addition, okay? So whether we are uh, dealing with uh, uh, the uh, prime field or better still, the extension field, one thing you should know is that the addition operation, addition operation and the subtraction operation are the same. So it means that should we perform, should we desire to perform subtraction operation? Performing an addition operation will give us the same result. So it means that A minus B is the same as A plus B is the same as A modulo two, uh, A uh, is the same as the, the, the modulo two addition uh, of A and B. Okay, now this you should take note of, please. Don't forget this one. Okay, so because now we want to perform addition, subtraction, multiplication, and inversion. And well, shortly you will see that the multiplication and inversion don't follow the same rule as we have in your regular arithmetic. But we already know we are playing with modulo two, okay? And whatsoever we're gonna be dealing with, we already mentioned in the last example, okay? Because whatsoever your answer will be, or the resultant code will be, or elements will be, it should be an element in that field also. So in other words, should I perform my multiplication or inversion of the particular process? Should I get a particular element, say E, that element also must be a member of this field or better still, this field. That's just what we're trying to say. And that the subtraction and addition operation is the same. So in prime fields, the addition, subtraction, and multiplication is pretty straightforward using your modulo two operation. We already did that, okay? 
And um, now, should we desire to perform the inversion rule? Okay, so it should be noted that inversion, please take note of this note, inversion in the prime field and also in the extension field must satisfy the group rule. Recall our group rule. I think group rule number four, where we have A dot A inverse must be the same as A inverse dot A must be the same as one mod P, okay? Mod P. For all elements of A in the Galois field, or better still, elements of A in the extension Galois P of M. P to the M. Now, so uh, I already mentioned that the uh, extension Galois field 2 to the M is of major concern in coding. So we now want to consider the procedure for performing various arithmetic operations in the extension, okay? Now, everything we did earlier, playing with integer uh, for the modulo, for the modulo, uh, 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 for the modulo addition and multiplication and the like applies in the prime field. But let us check out the uh, extension field because here we have to deal with polynomials. We are not dealing with integer, integer per, per se. So let us uh, quickly quickly look at the addition and subtraction operation in the extension field. Okay, so once we are done with this, we'll try to go on break for like 30 minutes or so and then come back uh, to see how far we can push uh, the corridor. Okay, so uh, now we want to look at addition. and subtraction in the extension field. Now, uh, I already mentioned that addition and subtraction are the same, right? So if, for instance, we have phi one of x and phi two of x as element of the extension field, The addition operation of the two elements is computed by, say, phi of x is the same as phi 1 of x plus phi 2 of x is the same as the sum taking the range from i to n minus one phi sub i x sub i since it's a polynomial where phi sub i is the coefficient and i x sub i i in x sub i is the power of the polynomial is such that phi of i is the same as phi one i plus phi two i mod p of x. And the subtraction operation follows directly and the subtraction operation follows directly such that phi of x is the same as phi one of x, oh sorry, that's minus, minus phi two of x is the same 
as a sum of i being the same as taking a value range, uh, taking values from zero to n minus one, that's the sigma uh, of pi sub i s to the i such that phi of i is the same as phi one phi one i minus phi two i is equivalent to phi one i plus phi two i mod p of x. So hence, the subtraction operation and the addition operation are the same, okay? Now, if, if this is clear, then, uh, I'm write this. Now, since the extension field, extension field, the gala field, P to the M has polynomial representation. So you're going to recall that the elements of the extension field two to the M are of the form. A sub M minus one S to the M minus one plus dot 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 all the way to A sub two X to S squared plus A sub one X plus A naught. And now this is of the form say A of X being an element, for instance, in the Galois field or in the extended Galois field. So here you know that the coefficients, all of these coefficients, a sub m minus one, a now, uh, da, 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 all the way to a sub two, a sub one, then a naught, take on values, take on values between zero and one, okay? Because we are dealing in the binary field, okay? So it means that A sub i is an element, yeah. So it means that A sub i is an element of the prime field because for the prime field, we have just two integer values, okay? So it means that all of these coefficients, these coefficients, take on elements from the prime field, not from the extension field, because their distribution is between the integer value zero and one. Okay. So from this, we can consider a few examples of the extension field. Okay. So let us consider uh this uh interesting example the extension field two to the four two to the power four now uh looking up this we can tell that we have about uh this is equivalent to 16 so we have 16 uh elements in this field okay and here, uh, four represents uh, the number of coefficients. So we have two coefficients because in the uh, extended field, uh, here we have M number of coefficients, okay? So here we can tell that we have four coefficients. And in the polynomial form, we have a sub three x cubed plus a sub two x squared plus a sub one x 
then plus a naught. So this is supposed to be x naught, while this is s to the power of one. So s naught is the same as one. So we can strike that off. So, and x to the power of one is the same as one. So we can strike this off and then uh, represent that with a naught. So that's just, uh, so we know it's four. Okay, or better still, uh, for ease of, uh, let's just leave the distribution the way it is, x to the power of naught. So this is what we have. So we have four, zero, one, two, zero, one, two, three. So we have one, two, three, four, okay? And then the coefficients, one, two, three, four coefficients. So uh, intuitively, this uh, anything to the power of zero reduces to one. So we can designate this uh, using the proper notation, a sub three x cubed plus a sub two x squared plus a sub one x plus a naught, okay? So this is the polynomial distribution of this extended Galois field. And now we already know that here we have 16 elements, okay? We have uh, 16 elements of the extended field. And now we can actually put that up straight up, right? So uh, we have the polynomial distribution will give us the first element here, when all of these are turned to turned off, when this is zero, 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 then we have zero, right? So that's the first element. So when this they are all turned off, all zeros, and then we have uh, one. A naught is turned on, so we have one. Okay, so when they are all turned off, including a naught is turned off, this is all zero, 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 and then a one is turned on, so we have, when this is one, so we have x, right? Now, the rule of thumb. We know we have 16 elements, right? So we have um, a three, a two, a one, a naught, okay? So this is, Two to the power of zero, two to the power of one, two to the power of two, to the power of three. Let's change this now. So we have two to the power of zero, two to the power of one, two to the power of two, two to the power of three, right? Zero, one, two, three. And then let's change this color again. And then here we have one, we have two, we have four, we have eight, okay? And then we know we have 16 distributions ranging from uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, right? So, okay, so let's uh, come back to our regular code. So now, when they are all turned off, that's the first bit distribution, this zero, which is zero. So it means this is zero, 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 zero. So we said the next is one, right? So it means this is one, right? So for us to get one, so it means this is turned off, this is turned off, this is turned off, 8, 4, 2 are turned off, only one is turned on. So this is 1, 0, 0, 0. So that's for this. So we have 1. Now, when, now for 2, it means that 8, 4, they are turned off. That's A3, A2 are turned off. A0 is turned off. Only A1 is turned on. So this is turned on. So this is 0, 0, 0. So that gives us 2. And when only one is turned on, and all these are zero times three uh, times x cubed is zero, zero times x squared is zero. Now one times x is x, zero times x naught is zero. So we have just x. Now for the next point, 
Now here we have x plus one. So let us see if that child is here. So for us to have three turned on, so it means two plus one, that is three. So it means this is turned on, this is turned on. So become really messy. So it means two plus one is three. So these two are turned on and all of these are turned off, right? So it means these two, uh, this uh, A sub three, A sub two are turned off. So A sub one is turned on and this is turned on. So one times X is X. And then uh, this is one already. A naught is one. So one is one. So X plus one. So uh, the next... Uh, uh, element is x squared. So here, only 4 is turned on. So 4 is turned on, it is turned off, this is turned off, this is turned off. So that's why it's x squared. And the same here, 5. So 1 and 4 and 1 are turned on, that's 5, then this is 0, 0. So it means we have uh, x squared plus what now? Four is turned on and one is turned on. We have x squared, so that's x squared plus one, right? Is this clear at all? Is this clear? Not so clear, sir. Square. Okay. And then for six, it's four and two. So this one one. So this all zeros, right? So it means x squared plus x is turned on. x squared plus x is turned on. And then we have seven. So this is one, 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 zero, right? So it means x squared, x and one are turned on. So that's x squared plus x plus one turned on. Then we have A. This is turned on. This is turned off. This turned off. This turned off. So it means X cube is turned on. X cube. Then here we have 9. That's 1 and that 8 and 1 are turned on 0, 0. So that is X cube plus 1. Then for 10, we have 8 and 2 are turned on. Okay, eight and two. So that's x cubed plus x. So x cubed plus x, All right? Then for 11, so we have eight, two, and one. So this is one of voice one of. So that's x cubed plus x plus one is turned on. Then for 12, we have eight and four, and then this is zero, zero. So for eight and four, that is x cubed plus x squared. x cubed plus x squared are turned on. Now for 13, so this is, uh, this is 12, and then this, that's 13, so this is zero. So that is x cubed plus x squared plus one and so on. Then for 14, we have eight, two, four, that's 14, then zero. So that gives us x cubed plus x squared plus x are turned on. Then for 15, one, 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 one. So that gives us x cubed plus x squared plus x plus one. So the extended Galois field two to the uh, power four 
gives us these 16 polynomials, okay? And they correspond to this distribution, okay? Is this clear? Is this clear, please? I need to get your feedback, please. Uh, Mr. Yes, it's Mark. clear. Okay, it's clear. Okay. Now, let us consider another example, okay, before we begin to perform the addition subtraction operation. Now, uh, let us consider the extended field to Q. So here, you agree with me, just like we did earlier. So we have eight elements here, two to the power of three is eight, right? And uh, yes. and then we have three coefficients, right? We have three coefficients, so we can tell that this is uh, equivalent to uh, a two x squared plus a one x plus a naught, right? So this is the polynomial dis uh, description of this process. So since that is what we have, just like we did earlier, we have a, a sub two, a sub one, a naught. So this is one, two, four, right? That's two to the power of zero, two to the power of one, two to the power of two. Then we also have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? These are the distributions. No, there's no eight. That's is to seven because we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight elements. So, so let's just get this going. So this is turned on all zeros. Then one is turned on one zero zero. Two is turned on zero zero. And three is turned on one one zero. Four is turned on one zero zero. Five is turned on one four one. Then is zero. Now six is turned on one one plus zero. Then all is turned on. So this is also going to give us the same distribution for this extended field, which is the same as the first element here is zero, and then the second element is one. Then the third element, uh, the next element is x. When one is turned on, x. Now the next element is x plus one, x plus one. Then the next element is x squared. Then the next element is uh, x squared plus one. Then the next element is x squared plus x. And the last element is x squared plus x plus one. So those are the eight elements in the extended LRP. And now if we should go back to our previous uh, field, now I want us to go back to that. Let's quickly, let's just pull back. I want us to pull an example from that and then uh, solve an example from that. Okay. I want us to do something because I need all of this uh, right now. So let's see what this part. I need the polynomials. Like this and then. Now, let's assume we are given the extended Galois field. Now, we want to perform addition operation, okay? So, let's, uh, let's say addition. 
So now we want to perform this in this uh, extended gamma field to the ball. Now, if we are given by one of x to be the same as x cubed plus x squared plus x plus one, which is this element, plus power of two, which is x cubed plus x squared plus one. So uh, this, right? x cubed plus x squared plus one. So we want to add up this two. So what do we get here? So this plus this, they have the same coefficient, one modulo two addition one, x cubed plus this plus this, one modulo two addition, one uh, then x squared. Then here we have x, then plus the modulo two addition one. Now one plus one is zero, right? Zero dot x cubed plus zero dot x squared plus x plus zero, right? So hence, one of x plus five, two of x is the same as x. And you also recall that both addition and subtraction operation gives all the same result. This is pretty straightforward. So let us uh, jump right into the multiplication operation. And hope you understand this, right? You get this, right? Are you with me? Yes, the last, uh, I think the last computation we, I lost on the network, so I couldn't get to how you arrived at this uh, last operations. Okay, okay, so uh, I'll take it again. Okay. Last three lines. Okay, this, this, and this, right? Yes. Okay, so we just wipe it and then take it again. Now, recall that we said that we will be performing modulo two addition, modulo two multiplication. Everything is on modulo, right? Because we are yes. actually in the binary field, the extension field, but in the binary field, two to the end. That's important to us in code. Now, I uh, we already gave the distribution of this extended field. We have the 16 elements. Yes. So now we want to add up two of the elements, okay? So in adding up two of the elements, we are supposed to also get an element in this field, if it is a finite field. And if we are to uh, go by the definition and the conditions that must be satisfied for both the Galois, for both the group and the field in terms of its mean, right? So we just assume that yes. we want to add up this particular code here, this particular, element and this element. So that's what we have here, this element and this element. One okay. and then. So we just arrange them in terms of their power, okay? So this plus this plus this, okay. and this plus this plus this. So it's the same thing. But I just left this space because we do not have X element here to help us, you know, just um, uh, to have a nice uh, presentation. You know, that's not necessary which may not be necessary. So for us to add this up, you recall that they have coefficients, right? Coefficients. These are their coefficients, right? Yes. So in this case, the coefficients are not shown. So it means they are one, right? So okay. the coefficient of this yes. is one, the coefficient of this is one. So if we add up their coefficient, that will be one, plus one times the x cube, right? Okay, okay, okay. We are performing addition operation here. All right, all right. So plus the coefficients are one, right? So one plus yes. 
one times the x squared. x squared. All right. Then plus x, then plus one plus one. Those are the coefficients already. All right. And we know in the modulo two addition, one plus one is zero. So this will be zero times yes. x squared plus zero times x squared plus x plus zero, right? Those are zeros. Yes, sir. So this we knock this off, and then all we have is x. It's and x. x is also an element in this distribution. All right, very clear now. No. Okay. So if we got this right, then let's try out the multiplication before we go on a brief break. Still looking up the same example. So I see we see take a few elements from this and then let's see what we get. So let's say multiplication. The extension here. So let's assume what we picked before, these two codes, these two elements rather. We want to multiply them. So that's going to give us x cubed plus x squared plus x plus 1 times x cubed plus x squared plus 1, right? So if we should expand this, once we multiply this, then we are going to add their powers, right? Remember your indices, right? So that would be x to the power of 6, right? This times this. So this now is multiplying this. Plus x to the power of 5. Is that clear? Plus x to the power of 4. Plus x cubed. We are done with that first one. Then we take this off. x squared times the entire process. That will be x to the power 5 plus x to the power 4 plus x cubed plus x squared. Then 1 times the entire process will be x cubed plus x squared plus x plus 1. So now we want to collect like terms, right? So this would be the same as x to the power of 6 plus, okay, we have two of this, x to the power of 5 plus x to the power of 5. Then we have two of these two plus x to the power of 4 plus x to the power of 4. Then we have how many of these three of these plus x to the power of 3, x to the power of 3, x to the power of 3. Then how about the square, just two of these, plus x squared, plus x squared, and plus x plus 1. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, okay. Now, uh, we can also represent this as x to the power of 6 plus now, this modulo 2 addition, so we could say 1 plus 1 times x to the power 5 is the same as this, right? Then plus 1 plus 1 x to the power 4. Then plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 x to the power 3. Then plus one plus one x squared plus x plus one. Okay, so now we know this is going to reduce to zero. This will reduce to zero. This will reduce to zero, and this will reduce to zero. Now one plus one is is, is zero plus one. This is going to reduce to one, right? So it means that. Here, we are now going to have x to the power of 6 plus 
x cube plus x plus one, isn't it? So going by our definition, this is the same as c of x, right? Is this clear? Yes, it's clear. But this is not correct because we do not have this as an no, element in this, this field, right? Is that correct? Yes. It's not in the field because the- It's the, acid. Yeah, the, the highest, no, in fact, the, 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 the last element in this field is x cubed plus x squared plus x plus one. So this poses another problem, which brings us to the irreducible polynomial. Okay, now that we have observed that by simply performing your multiplication operation on these elements, we were not able to derive or deduce, or better still, we're not able to derive an element that is also a member of this distribution. So hence, a polynomial reduction is required to derive a solution to C of X. And now you should recall that here, we have C of X, mod 16, right? Isn't it? The number of elements we have here. Yes. Right? It's mod 16. Okay, and the elements we have in this in this field range between zero to fifteen, right? So we yes. can't we can't we can't be performing modulo two. We are going to be performing modulo sixteen, right? Is that clear? Yes. Okay. Now, if this is clear, we are going to put this up here. So I want to wipe this part. So what we have. I want to leave this uh, 16 element distribution. So uh, what we have here is C of X, which is the same as X to the power of six plus X. Plus X cube plus X plus one, right? And here we already made mention that okay. we are performing C of X mod 16. So that's all we got from here. So I can wipe this back. So it means that we will now have to figure out the irreducible polynomial that we will divide this by, this answer by, by performing modulo 16 operation to get that particular uh, element of interest, okay? And so, uh, uh, by definition, by definition, the extension field, extension field multiplication is given by say by one of x by two of x are elements of the extended field and if we let and if and if p of x is the same as sigma taking on value from zero to m p sub i s super i such that p sub i is an element in the prime field recall that p in this case is 16 right and that's uh, an element in the prime field, not in the extension field. We know we already mentioned that, right? So if this if this uh, piece of S, if we say if it be 
and irreducible polynomial. Now multiplication. of the two elements by one of x by two of x is performed as phi of x then equivalent to phi one of x dot by two of x mod p of x, just what I mentioned earlier, right? Is that clear? Is this clear? Now, if we assume, let's say we take um, uh, this as the irreducible polynomial, you know, visually it will be given, but you you have to figure that out. You know, x to the five plus x plus one. That's as in this is you know that reducible for the moment, for instance. Now let's see if we'll be able to resolve this problem. Now I'm going to wipe this again. So if, for instance, that this is the irreducible polynomial, then we can now perform that operation, say x to the power of six plus x cubed plus x plus one. And we have x to the power of five plus x plus one. So this into this will be x, this times this, that's x to the power of six plus x squared. So that's gonna be somewhere here, then, plus x, right? So if we perform the modulo 2 addition here, that's going to give us a zero here. So here we have x cubed plus x squared. This will be zero plus one. So this now gives us by one of x dot by two of x mod p of x. And you'll observe that this now is also an element in this distribution, which is x cubed plus x squared plus one, right? Just uh, to put things uh, simply or nicely. Now, uh, if, if this is clear, uh, I'll love us to just take this in passing, then uh, we go for a little break. I think we've spent uh, over an hour already, close to two hours. So, so you will recall that the inverse operation of an element, the, uh, the inverse operation, the inverse of X of an element, A of X, in the extended Galois field two to the m must satisfy a s dot f s inverse, which is equivalent to one mod p of x. Okay, and this also could be tricky, and we may not go into that at this point. Because uh, because of the complexity, uh, one of the interesting algorithms used for resolving the inversion problem is the extended Euclidean algorithm, okay? So you may want to look that up, extended Euclidean algorithm. So I think uh, this is a good place to uh, uh, probably uh, a stop uh, in terms of describing the Galois fields. And um, uh, going forward, we are going to apply, we are going to be applying this algebra in 
analyzing, distributing, developing uh, error correction codes. So any question for now before we go for a brief break, maybe 30 minutes break uh, or so or something there about. So we could come back at like, uh, let's say 3 p.m. between 3 p.m. to 4 or 5 p.m. And then uh, we look into some other interesting things. Is that okay? I would like, I would love to get your feedback. Hello, sir. Yeah, I'm with you.